Seahawks Today, powered by Chat Sports, coming up in just a few moments from right now. But before we do, we want to make sure that you are an award-winning subscriber to Seahawks Today. Got to keep up with the Broncos breakdown. Those guys, they took your quarterback. You don't want them to take your pride, too. We got to keep up with them on the subscriber count as they've reached just over 1,400 subscribers since the Russell Wilson trade went down. We got to keep up and keep this thing going. We have daily content for you. The easiest way to be a part of what we're doing here is going to youtube.com slash Seahawks TV. Turn those notifications on and make sure that you are a part of our daily Seahawks coverage. The 2022 NFL Draft is just around the corner, and we hit the draft simulator from Pro Football Network to see how the draft works out for the Seattle Seahawks. Now, let's set the scene for you going into Thursday night. The Seahawks looking for a franchise quarterback, but still have other needs as well, including the offensive tackle, edge rusher, inside linebacker, and cornerback spots. Eight picks total for the Seahawks in the draft, and... When you look at the Seahawks holding that number nine pick, it doesn't happen very often where the Seahawks have a top ten pick. It is crucial for them to get this right in one of the most important drafts in the last decade for the Seattle Seahawks. Here are the first eight picks according to the simulator, the way it worked out. A few surprises. Aiden Hutchinson goes one to the Jags. But then after that, Sauce Gardner, the cornerback from Cincinnati, goes two to Detroit. Evan Neal goes three to the Houston Texans, while Kyle Hamilton goes four to the New York Jets. Five is Charles Cross, the offensive tackle from Mississippi State, while the first quarterback comes off the board from Liberty. That is Malik Willis at six to Carolina. Then the Giants, with their second pick of the draft, go Trayvon Walker, the edge rusher from Georgia, while Garrett Wilson, the wide receiver from Ohio State, goes to Atlanta at eight. So that leaves the Seahawks at number nine with a lot of good options still available at this point, including Kayvon Thibodeau, the edge rusher from Oregon, Akeem Aguano, the NC State offensive tackle, as well as Jordan Davis, the defensive tackle from Georgia, Jermaine Johnson, the edge rusher from Florida State, and Derek Stingley Jr., the cornerback from LSU. So where does that leave the Seahawks with this pick? And you leave me in charge of making this pick. I'm not going to disappoint you. I can guarantee you that much. And I got to go with Kayvon Thibodeau here. Easy call. Slipping all the way to nine. I would love the idea of taking Kayvon Thibodeau if he's available here at nine. You kidding me? Look at the scouting report on this guy. Burst is incredible. Gifted athlete. Smart. I always like hearing that. <laughs> and you talk about, okay, he might not be that great against the run, but he is a heck of a pass rusher. Probably needs to bulk up a bit, but you know what? That can be worked on. I got to tell you, when I look at Kayvon Thibodeau, of all the things that he does right, with the athleticism, with how smart he is, he could be the best player in this draft. Now, sure, there's concerns about maybe he's a little egotistical of some sorts. Maybe he's a little overconfident. Maybe he needs to bulk up a little bit. I can deal with those things. If you're getting him at nine, this is a steal. He has the potential to be the very best player in this draft. I would love this if he falls to the Seahawks at nine. You give me the chance to take Tibbs at nine, I'm going to take advantage of it. What do you guys think? Here's your chance to weigh in. Comment in the comments section. Do you like the idea of taking Kayvon Thibodeau at number nine? Type Y for yes, type in for no. You're going to get an ad break here in just a second. While that ad's playing, get your votes in. Tell us if you like the idea of Seattle taking Kayvon Thibodeau at nine. We move ahead to the second round and the last five picks leading up to the Seahawks picks back-to-back. -back, some notable names, including Christian Watson, the wide receiver at North Dakota State, Troy Anderson, linebacker from Montana State, just to name a few there, as well as uh, Christian Harris, the linebacker from Alabama. So now the Seahawks with the two picks at 40 and 41. Some good names still around, according to the simulator, including Tyler Linderbaum, the center from Iowa, Brees Hall, running back from Iowa State, Devontae Wyatt, defensive tackle from Georgia, Tyler Smith, the offensive tackle from Tulsa, and Desmond Ritter, quarterback from Cincinnati. Now, worth noting, before we make this pick, a couple of those names that you're seeing on your screen there are guys that we even talked about potentially the Seahawks selecting 
all the way back at nine. So the fact that they're still around here in this simulator, hmm, I like what I see. So with the first pick at 40, I got to go Tyler Linderbaum here. Now you may be saying, wait, Tyler, when you showed me those draft needs, it didn't say center on there. Well, Tyler Linderbaum, folks, has some tremendous potential. He reminds me of what we saw from Creed Humphrey last year, who the Seahawks missed on, ultimately went to Kansas City, was an all-pro center. I think Tyler Linderbaum could be the same thing right away. Elite athlete, our guy Tom Downey says that he's a stud. Don't be dumb. This guy can do it all. Uh, he is only a center. Can't play him at guard, but that's fine for me. We don't know who the future quarterback for the Seahawks is going to be going forward, but if they have somebody that they can trust under center right there that's protecting the way, you got to feel good about Linderbaum. I would love this pick for Seattle there at 40. Now the second pick at 41. This one, I'm going quarterback with Desmond Ritter, and I'm holding true to my promise to Seahawks fans out there that I would not draft a quarterback in the first round if I was in the Seattle Seahawks because I did not feel like that any of these quarterbacks were worth a first-round grade in 2022. So I will hold to that, and we take Ritter here in the second round. As I've said many times previously, Desmond Ritter is a good second-round find if he's there, and I think he will be. Four-year starter at Cincinnati. Took them to the college football playoff, the first ever non-Power 5 school to do so. Solid arm, good athlete, and you're talking about somebody that I think could compete Day one for the starting job there in Seattle with Drew Locke and Geno Smith. Now, we're going to have draft covered here on Chat Sports. It is going to be a heck of a time. All three days on YouTube.com slash Chat Sports TV. And we're not going to worry about all those boring interviews and all that. We're going to break down every single player throughout the draft. You can watch it on YouTube. You can watch it on Rumble. Three days, all seven rounds this weekend beginning Thursday night. You will not want to miss it. Chat Sports has you covered. YouTube.com slash Chat Sports TV. All right, let's move into the third round now. Chad Muma is my pick, the linebacker from Wyoming. And you're still trying to figure out who the Seahawks replace Bobby Wagner with. Muma's got some potential here. And I know that he went to a smaller school at Wyoming, but... I wouldn't let that waver too much here. Three down potential, averaged 11 sacks per game the last two years. Wherever the ball is, he finds it. I really like what Muma can put together with that uh, selection there in the third round. I think that he's better than what uh, would fall. If if he ends up in the third round, you're looking at a guy that realistically I think is about a second-round talent. I think you feel good about getting Muma at this spot here. We move ahead to the fourth round. And Matt Letzko, uh, the offensive tackle from North Dakota, is my pick here. And Matt, he's got incredible length. And I know that some of you probably would have rather have picked an offensive tackle earlier, but we played the hand that we were dealt in this situation with Evan Neal and Charles Cross already off the board by the time the Seahawks picked at nine. This guy's got incredible length. He's six seven in size, four-year starter, and really can do it all. Um, you know, I think the Seahawks ultimately are going to bring back Dwayne Brown for one more go at it. Let him sit behind Dwayne Brown, get some reps in, and he could be your starting left tackle maybe by halfway through next season. I would like this pick for Seattle there in the fourth round. You go to the fifth round, and I think now you dress the cornerback situation. And for me personally, I don't like using high draft picks on cornerbacks. It's not a priority position for me, but it still needs to be addressed for the Seahawks. You go to the fifth round, you get Damari Mathis, the cornerback from Pittsburgh. Solid tackler. A good run defender. Works better in shorter areas than downfield. Very grabby. Got to be careful of that. He could cause some penalties, but I like my guys to be more aggressive than not aggressive at all. So now we move into our last couple of picks for the Seahawks. Sixth round, I go Brian Robinson, the running back from Alabama. He was really good in his time with the uh, Crimson Tide. Power runner, only fumbled the ball twice and forced a lot of missed tackles. I'm surprised that he falls to the sixth round here. And, you know, he's limited in the passing game. I get that. And the NFL is going that direction where your running backs have to be able to do both. But considering you already have Penny and Carson – as your one and two backs, 
Brian Robinson to be your third option there, I think he's a nice change of pace of some sorts to be that power runner compared to what you have with the other two guys. Last pick for the Seahawks, we go best available in the seventh round. D.J. Davidson, the defensive tackle from Arizona State's our pick here. And at 6'5", 325, I think this is one of those you're, you're hoping for potential. The numbers weren't great, but you see with his body frame – that there's potential for him to potentially do something there, and that's what you're looking for in the seventh round, essentially. So, what do you think of my mock draft? How did I do putting together this draft for the Seahawks? We didn't get any trades. This was just straight through, all eight picks through the seven rounds. Tell me what you think. Here's your chance to be the judge. You can grade my mock draft A, B, C, D, or F. Type those in the comments below. You'll get an ad break here in just a second while that's going on. You can tell me how great I did or how terrible I did or maybe somewhere in between. Let me know what you guys think how I did on this Seahawks mock draft. Now, personally, I'd get my mock draft at A. Uh, we've, we covered every single need. We got some quality talent. And in the first three picks in my mock draft, we found players that all are in other mock drafts in the first round with Kayvon Thibodeau, with Tyler Linderbaum, with Desmond Ritter. Although that we waited till the fourth round and the fifth round to address the offensive tackle and the cornerback spots, considering the value that we found with those first three picks, how could you not love this draft for the Seahawks? Make me the general manager.